All right. I'm here with Michael Nibbling, and he's a friend of mine. And we've been chatting lately a lot about HCI and about research and about technology and about the future of everything. Uh, you are also a professor in University of Michigan. You have mm -hmm. courses in Coursera with thousands of students. You have courses in Stanford about the topic. And you are also a pretty fun person to talk to. <laughs> so it was very nice to have you here. How are you That's doing? Cool. I'm glad to be here. It's nice. I like uh, I like uh, like the set. This is really nice, of course. Good you like you. the set? Nice. Yeah, I prepared some special things for you. You have there an iPad and and then like and an iPod. I have here also some. This is like an old iPod. <laughs> yeah, I have a mouse. <laughs> this is what I could find about HCI. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, I haven't done I haven't done too much research with weapons, but um... with weapons, maybe you don't even know what is that. You so that camera it's actually very special because uh -huh. you showed me that one of the papers, one of the latest paper that you published, it was about cameras in VR yeah. and XR. Yeah, and for that camera, there's uh -huh. actually a real camera in the camera in your desk, the one in your desk oh. that you want to scrap. Oh, this one here. So there is a camera one. there. Yeah, so that oh, is also I streaming the, the, the show. Okay. So everything, Oops. if you can kind of grab it, you can you can just pinch. Yeah, so yeah, right. that is yeah. going to be showing so me or uh, something. It's looking your way. Huh? Am I filming? Oops. Yeah, you're Am filming, filming me. You so if you if okay. you move it like this, you're going to be showing the people how the studio looks. <laughs> yeah, so that's cool. So that's and, the studio yeah. right there. And Michael is the camera man. Yeah, I'm not uh, yeah. with... So with hand tracking, it is interesting. So we used to, yeah, you're right. We looked into uh, a system so we can control multiple virtual cameras and and also have more automated support. So I don't have to do this all the time. Um, but I like the one that you yeah. put here. It's cool. Um, where do you want it? Do you want me to put it in a different way or is it fine? Do whatever you want with it. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> okay. it was for you. I, I tried could to just put like, some can you mount here? it? It looks like you can mount it, but you can't mount it. Oh yeah, you can mount it on top of the of the beer. <laughs> Where's the beer? <laughs> you can try. You can try. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, no! Come on, come on. Yeah, it's you not see, bad. you're already <laughs> innovating in my set, and you're breaking. Yeah, it. this is cool. Right. I think now you make you're making it dance. Yes, <laughs> I'm making it dance. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's cool. It worked. It worked. Great. Yeah, so that that was inspired in in the paper you showed me, you published, and it's not published it's not, yet. But you, we, sub, we submitted it, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. you, it's submitted. It's for it's for for which conference specifically? Uh, so yeah, it's going to be at the an, an H, let's say an HCI, a major HCI conference, <laughs> uh, with a with a deadline in September, so everybody knows where 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 it was submitted. These things are a little tricky. You have to be oh yeah, like because it's still under submission, you. You don't oh, want to reveal that's too fine. much about it, but um, I'm happy to talk about the work, um, and it's uh, it's fine. I mean, I don't think anybody will mean <laughs> will be against us. I mean, the the work should be judged in a, a neutral way. So when you mm -hmm. when you submit these things, as you may know, you you do not reveal your identity, and mm -hmm. um, most people don't talk about the work that hasn't been published yet. But I'm happy to happy to talk about it. But I really you like the talk... set, and I, it's just nice. <laughs> Yeah, you can talk about your favorite paper that you have published. Is that something <laughs> that you can oh, yeah, get allowed yeah. to talk? I mean, to? that's always it's always like uh, I don't know, always the latest. I am very excited about these virtual cameras, and I think just seeing your set. I mean, you put a lot of. I mean, I'll take the camera one more time. I'll show you what you what you. What, this is actually really like a fancy place, right? There's like vending machines there, uh, cars in here. <laughs> uh, yeah. It is really fancy, and then our hosts are sitting there. And it is it is cool. I, I really like it. So what we explored is um, whether I could place a few different cameras in the scene and whether some of these cameras could automatically, for example, follow me or follow you or activate when we do when you do specific things. And so we explored um, a combination of like more manual control of cameras, like the way you have it here, or automated control. We also have like drones and um, other kinds of camera behavior. Um, yeah, but this is cool. <laughs> what happened with my beer? I think I dropped it. <laughs> yeah, you are gonna have to be thirsty for Shouldn't the rest have it anyway. of the show. Yeah, <laughs> I moved forward. No to beer for you. Story. 
no beer yeah. from me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there there is a lot of stuff. I was actually doing a little research on you to see like mm -hmm. uh, the, the conference you've given and to talk uh, a little bit about you. And I found something quite interesting. And I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can play it here. So remember, so this is the new feature of the show right here. Wow. The super cool. TV, yeah. And I found a video of you where you are presenting oh um, something. It's a oh, this one. You know what I, what I like about this video is that you're doing like a stand-up comedy show too. <laughs> is that the way that you yeah. always present your papers? Or people were so having a good a bit time. Of a, it was a bit of a special event. It was a a meetup uh, among user experience the the practitioners in uh, around the university so basically it was an evening where like i think 10 people went on stage and they they were supposed to give a five minute talk or something and i at that time i was working right. on prototyping ar applications and and i don't know whether it was a competition i don't know whether we won anything anyway i had a lot of fun that evening and it was very casual it's not how <laughs> this is not how you go to a conference this is more okay. like a fun <laughs> fun night yeah i have a question regarding that so you you are the professor of all these high level of education students and you are mm -hmm. having all these different publications and you are probably seeing a lot of the things that are coming up to people's hands uh maybe go through you first so maybe you did some study and maybe five years later, you see something like that actually being implemented in, in products, maybe on an iPhone or in a web mm -hmm. tool. Um, have you seen some of that like that? Some of your work or some of your students' work actually made it to to production and seeing it in so, uh, mass? I would say I was yeah. uh, there were maybe two or three times uh, in my career so far i mean i'm still relatively young not that old but yeah i've been doing this for like 10 12 15 years i don't know um so i would say two or three times where we were working on something and then something else happened and i'd like to believe that maybe uh, we informed it a little bit but it's not like i haven't the uh, license anything to any to, to anybody so for example we were working on on techniques that are very similar to what later became responsive web layout so um or mm -hmm. responsive web design we were looking at how to adapt um, web interfaces to small and large screens. And we didn't do it exactly with a grid-based approach, like the way it was proposed in 2010. Um, but we were, um, we had like, our idea was to build the adaptivity directly into the into the websites and using CSS and media queries at the time. So it shared it shared something. And then another, another thing I was working on was multi-touch interfaces. And I, there was a time when Firefox 4 came out. Firefox 4, I don't know what the current version is, probably <laughs> 50 or 80. Firefox 4 came out and had touch support. And um, and then and there was another browser. I forgot what it was. Um, and the iPads were out and, you know, all these things were out. And when you, when you were designing for, like, one or the other multi-touch device, they couldn't actually, you couldn't do it with the same uh web it was the browser war and all these had different oper operating systems in different browsers and i was working on kind of like an api and application programming interface uh so that you specify the multi-touch interface like in one way and then it would like run on this device and on that device and there was uh at the same year or a year later there was a w3c a web standard like a committee that was uh developing in touch api as part of the web devices, uh, W3C, so basically the web consortium. And um, yeah, again, there we didn't actually, I didn't actually, I went to one of the W3C workshops in 2010, but that was on a different project. So I, I can't claim that my work directly influenced, but I, let's say, I would say that I've had a few times I've had like the, a good nose, <laughs> like I, I was working mm -hmm. on things that we kind of like needed, um, but I wasn't directly involved in, in any of these standards, for example. But yeah, that's a, a kind of like a fun slash sad story, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think you are being um, quoted a lot of times in a lot of papers, right? Because of your previous work in mixed reality and augmented reality. So yeah, that happens. But I would say it's probably not special in the sense that 
if you if you're a good researcher you look at what other people are doing and you're trying to learn from them and so mm -hmm. i don't think it's like unique that i get cited um but um it is it is nice when you for me it's most interesting when people cite my work why do they mm -hmm. actually cite it and what how what do they right. say about it and there's like i would say there's like two examples of this one is like okay i need a paper where i can I, I just said something in my paper and i wanted to back it up so i'll pick a paper from the past and i'll just like try to show that somebody else has said something like that before when you get cited that way that's kind of like okay but then there are sometimes papers where they really say okay michael was working on this it had these limitations so now we're going to work on that i like that a lot because you can really see how one research uh, that we have done for example then it allows other people to build something on top of that they don't really directly like use our source code or something but they build on our ideas and i like it. i like it when that happens and th that does happen sometimes can you be cited in a in a bad way like michael uh, i would wrote say this but it... he didn't know what he was talking about <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so it's funny that you should ask. So there were two or three occasions in the last two two years where okay. um, as something a little unfortunate happened. So somebody cited my work and said um, I wasn't doing whatever they were doing in their paper. And mm -hmm. and they are actually people, let's see, maybe they were student authors who worked with people that know me. And I reached out to them and I said to them, you know, you cited my work. And in my paper, I describe how we can actually do what you say we can't do. Um, so is factually incorrect what they say about our work. I understand why they do it. They wanted to motivate their own work, right? You always feel like, mm -hmm. okay, I have to show uh, my stuff is new and nobody else has done this before. But to be honest, yeah. that's actually not the best way to sell your research. And especially if it's wrong, it can upset people. And I reached out to those um to the student and to the researchers and, and I yeah. just wanted to make sure that because when they write that in their paper, then the next person reads their paper and they think Michael has done it and they have only done a little bit of now I come. So it can really lead to some miscommunication. Anyway, whatever <laughs> happened, happened. How did you, you confront them? It, it, it wasn't an email, email or in a conference? I wrote an like, email. It was to, during the pandemic. The I wrote an email. I said, hey, by the way, I mean, I, I think I wrote like two versions of the email. The first one was a little <laughs> a bit, hey man. <laughs> and then, then, then I was in the actual one that I sent, I think it was a little nicer. Uh, you mm. know, sometimes when you're like in the moment, you shouldn't directly yeah. send it. It's like whenever you get uh, a little angry, you shouldn't directly. So anyway, I think it's fine. And, and, and they understood. Yeah, that that's fine. Um, you're only not only doing research, you also have this, uh, you have a lab right an hci lab in university of yeah. michigan and you're doing a That's lot right. of things and um programs for for the students to learn oh uh, so just a little context so uh, at the university of michigan it's a very big university so it's like i think the latest student numbers are 51,000 students so that's a big in my opinion it's a big university uh, so the city that i live in is in ann arbor that is um uh, like 20 minutes from Detroit, maybe people have flown uh, through Detroit. So it's not too far away from there. And it's like a college town. So it's like all about the university. So then in that university, there are like 19 different colleges. And I'm in one uh, that is called the School of Information. And people find it sometimes funny. In fact, they get calls, hello, can I get <laughs> some information? Uh, the School <laughs> of Information is, <laughs> is a it's an interdisciplinary environment where some people are computer scientists like myself. I'm a, I have a PhD in computer science. Um, and then there are others in library science and economics, um, social okay. kind of like uh, studies. So very, very, it's a, it's a interesting environment. We also have computer science and I am affiliated with computer science, but my lab is in the school of information and i teach user experience and interaction design and i think you like that kind of stuff right you you're very yeah. experienced in like design and prototyping and so i teach um a lot of students so we have like about 450 graduates every year they students that want to work in this user experience and design industry and they want to work for some of the i guess big companies or sometimes also do research but most of the time it's a very professional program Pro people come there to to learn the skills and initially I was teaching uh, interaction design and I always emphasize prototyping. I like that you have paper there as well. 
Um, we do a lot of paper. Those are and then I started to teach two AI VR courses um, yeah. as I was doing more research in those areas. And so for the last um, four or five years, I've been teaching AI VR courses. And that's been a lot of fun. That's, that's great, man. Um, so <laughs> I, I studied computer science, too, in, in my country, in Venezuela. And I went to one of the biggest or, let's say, most important universities in my country. But I actually nice. dropped out. Yeah, but it, but I couldn't finish, and it was for, Did for two reasons. Did you not want to finish, or what? Do you want to tell I, me why you didn't? Yeah, finish? I actually got very disappointed of the teachers and what, what oh. about hmm. the things I was learning. Yeah, I felt like uh, some of them wasn't even going to to classes, uh, so you needed to That's learn a sad. lot in for in yourself. Um, they were not so actually. You felt like you didn't have to go to the university. You have to learn everything yourself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but not only that, they were not encouraging their students to do to do more, to do better. So even though it was, it is still one of the best universities in, in the country, most of mm -hmm. the teachers were only telling you, all right, so there are just two branches of computer science. You can, you are going to end up building websites or you can end up doing business intelligence. That, that was like the two things. And you should take business okay. intelligence because this is what makes more money. And I was like, <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, there is so much you can do with technology. I was actually uh, like building video games about about the, the street dogs in my university. So I was trying street to be dogs? more creative. What are street dogs? Yeah, so there, there are dogs in the street. Oh, <laughs> living know? on the streets. Like, they don't have. Yeah, living on the streets. Yeah, yeah. We were doing um, a documentary on that. That's cool. I did kind of, kind of. It was well. like was an interactive yeah. game about the dogs. Yeah. Oh, it was and... more than it documentary okay. yeah uh even when i was in college uh there was a lot of protests in my country and that's that's the reason yeah. why i'm here in america as a political refugee that um mm -hmm. you remember this game flappy bird yes there was a yes, little bird yes, flying I, I do <laughs> yeah yes. all right so i participated in a hackathon in a game jam that you needed to do a flappy bird clone in 24 hours so i built it uh okay. it, it worked perfectly but I was going to the protest and it was super dangerous to go to the protest against the, the, the president and the government because people were getting right. killed. Uh, the students were going to jail. So I thought like maybe I can use technology as a way to protest too. So I, I re, nice. like revamped my game and I make the Flappy mm -hmm. Bird. It was the president. I put the head of the president and you were kicking okay, the ass of the president. Pretty, pretty direct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you were kicking the ass of the president to make it fly. Okay, okay. Was it? <laughs> yeah, did you and, release the game, or was it more like you kept? It that was yourself? a game for for Android. I published it on the on the Google Store, app Android Store. Okay. So cool. in the Google Play Store, yeah. And so, and every time that, that that the president died, you get a fact about the things that were happening in the country. Like I don't know, there is all this student has been has been killed by the police. All of mm. this uh, student has been put into jail. So I got like 50,000 downloads for, for, from that game. And wow. I, I had to run from the country also. But I, f I always felt that the technology could be used for many, many ways. Like making fun yeah, of a I president, think, for example. I do think the <laughs> way you approached it was pretty direct. Like, I mean, I understand that um, maybe, I mean, sometimes protest... In the direct form is probably is probably really what you mean, and um, but it, it actually it, it it endangered you, so that's that's a bit a bit sad, of course. Um, yeah, but, yeah I, th but that was that those were the tools I have, and the protests were, were very violent and they were very dangerous. So I feel yeah. like, well, uh, I don't want to risk my life like that. I can risk it doing what I know how to do. <laughs> so that was yeah, another way I, to risk I my life. This, um, I watched this Elvis movie recently. There's a new, El uh, a new Elvis movie. It's actually really nice. And he says, yeah. in one of the scenes, he says, the things you can't say, sing. Because he was a singer, mm. right? And, and you're like, okay, if I can't say it directly, if I can't go to these protests directly, I, what can I do? I can, I can program. And I can I can do yep. this game, and, and, and I mean fifty thousand downloads. That is, uh, that's more than any yeah. of my papers were ever read. So <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Uh, so the thing is that I I also make it in in English, 
So I got a okay. lot of downloads yeah, also from Europe. And that was nice. I got a lot of positive content. I also got a lot of comments from government supporters, like, we're going to go kill you. <laughs> or wow. I got a scratches in my car. That was, that was crazy. But as I was telling you, I always felt terrible. like, yeah, th there is a lot you can do with, with tech. So um, I remember when I was in college, I created the the biggest event for uh, it was the biggest game jam. And we even had sponsors. Uh, we had like a, a hackathon. It was like a, like a week of just coding. It was very fun. But this was mm -hmm. completely done by the students. The teachers never wanted to have anything to do with that. And it always felt like, is this people actually interested in, you know, pushing the boundaries of what they are doing or helping or doing maybe some talks, but they didn't want it to have anything to do with that. You know, if, if, the, if it wasn't not coming from them and they were not doing anything. So uh, I always felt very discouraged by that. Um, so I like, I was like, I'm learning so much in my own time. I'm doing a lot. I'm having freelance projects with other people from other countries with actually with Microsoft Connect um so that that was that was fun that was dangerous but fun i mean i mean yeah. i didn't know that so i learned something new here on the show i mean i've known you for for a little bit now but this is uh, <laughs> yeah. this is interesting i've had one student um we we wanted to use ar technology to to um to bring so, uh, sensitive narratives back to mm. people and Co cambodia has a lot of um inner conflicts and a lot of um a lot of terrible stories from the past and so we were looking at how to bring some of like we, we were working with a museum of memory and we were mm -hmm. working with a team there my student it was anna is her name at the time she's not a phd student uh, in santa barbara i think um so she she was really interested in using ai technology to 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 bring this context this um this memory of of the war and 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 all the issues around it uh to keep it like alive so that the new generations yeah. also understand like i mean you uh your family later it, it is an interesting story that you tell here right but i mean you have these these very vivid memories and um mm -hmm. and then you would tell these stories and then maybe these Maybe your children or your grandchildren one day they would like to know what grandpa was like, <laughs> and and it's yeah. interesting to think about what's the best way to preserve and tell these stories. And AR actually can be a tool, but it it can also be quite um, it can be re it can be traumatizing. It can be revictimizing. So you have to be careful. Um, but I think it's cool. Like when when I listen to the story, I mean the way you just ex I mean I think I understand that politically it was a very dangerous situation for you. It is because I know you're a fun guy. The way you talk about it, you talk it down. But actually, man, <laughs> uh, you just have got a lot more respect from me already. I mean, you know, I respect you, of course, as a as a friend. As a funny, <laughs> but this is amazing, man. I'm glad you you escaped uh, that and that you are like. I hope you're safe now and you don't feel like in any well, in any danger. I'm anymore. I'm here in America as a political refugee, so I I cannot leave the country uh, for some amount of years. And right now, I, I cannot leave to any other country. So I'm like, I'm here. Uh, and there is a lot of countries also to explore. I think America is very big. I have already been into like 30 states. <laughs> so states, Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's quite a lot of states. I've probably been in five. <laughs> yeah, yeah be, because I was living in... So when I, get, you know, when I got here, I was living in Chicago first. And then mm -hmm. uh, somebody called me to uh, lead a, a software development project in, in Miami. And I was living there, and then I got hired at Bose in Massachusetts. So oh, I drove okay, all the way from Miami to, to Boston. Yeah, so it was, it was kind mm -hmm. of far. And now I, I got hired at Meta, and I drove all the way from Boston to Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> By car. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, By Michigan car. is on the way. When you come from Boston, you go through. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't probably, you wouldn't go. Maybe you would go through Michigan. You have to go below the Great Lakes. And then you have to go yeah, all the way. Yeah. So I was looking at just my 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 portion, and um, then my wife said, "Don't do it." <laughs> and you did it from Boston, yeah. man. How long did it take you? More than a week, definitely, right? It was like two weeks, but I also <laughs> yeah. stopped. 
Yeah, I also yeah, stopped and, and, and yeah. I went through through Yellowstone to see how it was, okay. to see you the see, animals. I, was I would do that too, but then I'll probably take two weeks and uh, it's, yeah. But anyway, do, is that I mean, something that you have like a nice memory of that that big trip? Now is it? Was oh it yeah, nice it was it was super fun. It was it was just me, but it was super okay. fun um, because I was seeing all these different states, and I tried to go by the downtown of each state and kind of, you know, take some pictures about it and some videos. Mm. And I think that's it cool. was I very mean, nice. A trip like that. So I've done one thing. So before one thing that's maybe a little bit like that. So um, in 2007 or eight, I, um, I did a little, it wasn't really like an exchange program, but let's say there was an opportunity to go from my university in Germany like all the mm -hmm. way down to Australia and to Melbourne in Australia. And it's like, at that time I was, uh, how old was I? I was uh, in my 20s, so 23, 24 or something like that. Um, yeah. And I was um, going there uh, for a year. And I was, I mean, I've, I've been to different, like at that time I have never flown that far and I've never been that far away from home. So it was an interesting experience. And then, we, mm -hmm. I studied there, and then after like uh, almost a year of studying, my friends and I decided, okay, let's do a round trip through Australia. And Australia is, um, it's a, it's a continent. It's a it's a big it's a big uh, thing. I'm not sure how if you overlay it over America. I guess America is probably still bigger. I don't know actually. Uh, North America mm -hmm. definitely, but the U.S. I don't know. Anyway, so I was doing like a five week. <laughs> five week trip own sleeping wow. in a car and uh, and camping and stuff like that that was probably nice the memory that that comes close to what you've experienced um and yeah. I, I i i cherish it I, I think it was a good thing i i i mean some days were pretty tough to be honest <laughs> like you really want yeah. a nice shower or you really want a nice bed how did you survive did you take a did you go into hotels or how did you do it yeah so i i had to because when I moved from Boston, I I had my house right. I was I was renting mm -hmm. an apartment there, so I needed to move everything, and all not only not only my things but also my family stuff. So I needed from to Boston. put everything in my car. Yeah, everything in my car, fit it there, and drive to to Seattle. So I barely could fit myself in there. There was no space for another person. <laughs> yeah, I had like all most of the mirrors blocked just just to have one, so it's not illegal. <laughs> so I okay, could drive. Okay, that's good. Yeah, good, good uh, that you paid attention to that. You don't want to do. You want to do. You don't want to be yeah. stopped by the police with all these. Yeah, I just that's got cool. stopped once, and I think it was in North Dakota, and it was oh. because the the road was so boring. <laughs> It was super long and you couldn't tell if you were going fast or slow. You were just <laughs> pretty much sleeping while you were driving. <laughs> so yeah. so this guy stopped me and he was like, hey, you were too fast. And they put me a ticket in North Dakota. Oh, <laughs> well, that sucks. Yeah. I, mean, I, was, um, I was stopped by a policeman in, in Australia, but they... Um, the guy was very funny because they did a breath test whether I was drinking. I didn't drink any alcohol, so okay. And the police guy was very, yeah, it was a typical Australian, like very funny. Not, not like, not as serious as, as police as right. in many other countries, including in the U.S. Anyway, uh, stopped me. I had to blow into that thing, and then we we did a couple of jokes, and and then he let us go. Um, <laughs> but nice. yeah, uh, I I can see how some roads here. First of all, I yeah. am from Germany, so. The way you drive here is not fast. It's very slow. <laughs> so in Germany, we can go a lot faster. And really? Uh, yeah, a lot faster. And, and, and then the roads, I mean, yeah, if you have like a very long road, it's probably nice for the first five to 10 minutes. But then if it doesn't change, it's, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's tricky and, yeah, <laughs> funny. Yeah, in, stuff. In, in my country, the, the police is super corrupt. It's super, super corrupt. They always want to stop you and look for something so they can uh, ask for some bribe. So, yeah, for, mm. for, keep, for asking for some money. So I remember when I was in college, I didn't have any money at all. So this guy come to me and he was like, hey, you have this paper expired. You, you need to give me something so I can let you go. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm very broke. broke. 
I don't yeah. have any money. So he says, all right, let me, let me see what you have in the trunk. So I open up the trunk really? and oh yeah, so I open up the trunk and he found some non nunchucks, you know, oh, <laughs> some them. martial art nunchucks. And he yeah, says like, wow, are. this is, this is pretty cool. And he just took it from me and he let me go. <laughs> That was but so why? funny, but I can you do? I, I miss my of martial arts. Or... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm black belt in taekwondo. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm first so I'm brown belt in karate. No so, way. Uh, That's cool. Yeah, but I have stopped yeah. uh, many many years ago. I haven't been. I still think I know some moves, but <laughs> I haven't been exercising really? or doing it really. I, I did a bit of so karate. Are you still doing it? You're still doing it? Uh, no, not no. I I sometimes I want to get into a gym, but. What I like to practice right now is mostly jujitsu. It's what I oh, like wow. the most. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So jujitsu yeah, yeah. evolved out of. So it was Bruce Lee who 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 started it more or less, like Wing Chun and jujitsu. Doesn't no 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 like, jujitsu you know that... is more grappling. Okay. It's more like wrestling with some arm locks and chokes. That is that is jujitsu, like Brazilian jujitsu. Have you heard of it? When they do no, I've not heard of Brazilian. And... I thought there was one. I thought it was jujitsu that is uh, like it's like a combination of like four things: karate, judo, uh, taekwondo. Isn't it like that? No, it's different. No, no. So th that could be like maybe like mixed martial arts where you are combining stuff. But okay. the, the 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 pure grappling style would be jujitsu. What Bruce Lee did was uh, jet kundo. I think ah, Jet, Jet Kundo. Kundo, right? That was coming out of Wing yeah. Chun, Jet, Jet Kundo. Okay, that's yeah, right. Jet and Kundo. then Taekwondo isn't isn't Taekwondo more like feet heavy? Like you kick more and stuff, or is it? You kick more. Okay. Actually, Taekwondo came from karate, but it's but it's Korean, and it was like a mix of karate with something that like like the kung fu that was being done in Korea by the Korean monks. That is called uh, Tae Tae Taekwon Taekyeon. Taekyeon, that's the name. So they were doing a lot of acrobatics with kicks, and they make mix that with with karate, and they make can taekwondo. We, like little, we can do little things here, right? We can have like poof. yeah, you can use oh, okay. the tracking. <laughs> the tracking doesn't always work. Yeah. But, yeah. Kind anyway. of, kind of, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I, I I loved doing acrobatics. I actually uh, I did a lot of parkour when I was when I was younger and flips. Ooh, wow, you did all, all of that. Things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That is cool, man. Um, wow, I didn't know that. that was can very you skateboard fun. too? Have you been doing skateboarding? Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, okay. I was thinking yeah, I should try um, snowboarding. I never tried snowboarding. Have you tried snowboarding? You have to try it. Yeah. That, man, you know you live in Seattle. Are you gonna come are you gonna be here in, in winter? Yeah, I'll be there in the winter, yeah. You are going. We're going to snowboarding. Yeah. Uh, okay. Me and other okay. and other friends uh, are going. They, you know them. So, <laughs> so uh, we're definitely going to invite you. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Well, I'm I'm excited. Um, I've been doing the alpine uh, or alpine. I don't know what you say in English. Um, skiing. I grew up in the in the Alps, just normal skiing, like where you go down, like downhill skiing. Okay. But you have like two skis, and I've never, I've. I've never done snowboarding and I always thought it looks so cool and I want to give it a try. <laughs> it is very cool. It is very cool. <laughs> and I mean, if if you have experience already with snow sports, it's probably going to get easier for you because you already know how hard the snow can feel. <laughs> right? <laughs> but I haven't done it in so many years, so it's going to be interesting. <laughs> a little oh, bit yeah, of falling yeah. here and there, but whatever. It's going to be fun. It's Let's nice. Here in Seattle, we have really nice mountains to do mm -hmm. snowboarding. I mean, for for what I've seen, um, I haven't done snowboarding here. When I was living in Boston, there was a lot of really nice places too. And I mm -hmm. was always, I, I used to live like 20 minutes from the snowboarding mountain. So I was going like every weekend or sometimes on the oh, week. That's cool. I mean, then you have a lot of experience. I'll definitely follow you then. <laughs> <laughs> Get a, Not a lot, a, but yeah. I... I I don't fall that often, but I still do. You <laughs> don't fall that often. Well, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I look forward to that. Let's 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 try it. I wonder. I wonder. You can practice um, in VR. You can yeah, practice in VR some VR sports. <laughs> yeah. Snowboarding. Yeah, yeah let's do you that. can do some fighting sports in in VR. I think there are some good ones. So. Um, 
Yeah, when I what did I I liked um, I like all the uh, the Ip Man movies, the Wing Chun stuff, and then at, and when I was watching them, I was uh, I looked whether there are any cool VR games where you can do uh, kung fu mm. or karate. But I, I mean, when I checked, oh, they were all a little stupid. I wonder whether they are better now. <laughs> I do. There I, is. I, I think there's like mostly boxing. more realistic. I don't like the Street Fighter like throwing balls at each other or something. <laughs> I, I meant more like. <laughs> You know, like really cool techniques or like punches and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think right now it's mostly boxing. Mm -hmm. Because it's kind of hard. I, I mean, you don't, can you can't, we're, yeah, we can track this, of course. But you, you cannot yeah. track legs, for example, right now. No. But I mean, actually, so it does, it does track kind of okay. I mean, this is, this is, oh, this block looks terrible. I mean, I'm actually, my elbow is up, but it doesn't track my elbow, obviously, just, you know. This would be an upper block. This would be a lower block, <laughs> but it doesn't check the <laughs> elbow. So my elbow is actually here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can do some classes here, you know, some karate classes in VR. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I can show you. This is, uh, yeah. I mean, so I'm not sure what my head is doing, but like, I mean, in, in terms of, it, 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 it does look, from my perspective, it looks okay, but I'm sure from your perspective, it looks ridiculous. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, I, I do martial arts, so it's fine. You I can understand. imagine what I'm doing with my hands. But <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I can see, track, I can see it. I mean, this is just like upper punch, lower punch. I mean, yeah, I remember when fast, I started. So you can actually like... Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Dang, you, you're fast. <laughs> Tracking is okay. Uh, I remember when, when I started martial arts, and I feel like the first couple of days, I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is so silly. You know, why is like people what? moving like that <laughs> or no, no yeah, yeah okay. just just doing the, the whole things, the whole movements and, you know, the presentation of things. I was like, mm -hmm. why are they doing that? Like one month after I was so in, on it, you know, like I wanted you to really know all the movements, all the all the katas, you know. Yeah. OK, and... I did that, too. I even did that in competitions in, in general. Yeah. Kata did you do any fighting? My mom didn't want to let me fight. <laughs> so okay. I was not allowed to I mean we did practice fighting and and I got I got hit a few times but it wasn't like terrible but like when you do real committee like at, at a competitive level it is um the people really are serious so there's a high chance you get injured yeah, you yeah. Do it? I did some I did some fighting the problem was that um so I'm I'm not super tall so when I was like 17 years old I was fighting by age and not by weight so right. I was fighting Most other 17 years old who were like this. Yeah, that's a bit super tall. Then. Mm. Yeah, and super big. So that that's why I learned that maybe I should try something else because I'm super fast with kicks and and punches and everything. But <laughs> once I learned <clears throat> jujitsu, I I feel yeah. like I I could beat anyone because jujitsu it doesn't really matter your size or how big you are, how strong you are. It's just all technique. You can beat anyone like we should give it with jiu-jitsu. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Bring it on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you <laughs> this. going to throw something? Oh, my God. He's going to throw things at me. Yeah. Where's, where's <laughs> my not, gun? Where's my gun? Jump on the table. Or... <laughs> you're going gonna, you're gonna to assault me here in my show. Where's my gun? <laughs> no, I'm not going to assault you in your show. But you have a gun. Yeah, okay. my gun is gone, too. And then my beer is gone, and... <laughs> Yeah, everything. Uh, but I still have the camera here. It's cool. It's hey, camera. You, you know, I was I was reading something. There, uh, when I think about VR and, and sports and martial arts, I think about mm -hmm. I always wanted to have some way to fight against myself. You know, like oh, some like kind of AI know? that can learn from me, you know, so I can fight myself. Are. Yeah, that would be so cool. You know, like like a robot or something. That it could you, fight uh, exactly like me, so I can. The, I don't know. It just feels movie? super challenging, like something like that. Did you like in the, a movie? Yeah. Did you watch the Matrix movie when when? Oh yeah. Neo learns to fight against Morpheus. <laughs> <It's> actually, <laughs> that would be a really cool could, way to something fight. like that. <laughs> because they had like superpowers, they could like he can bend reality, right? So you can like jump really high and and be very fast and and i think that would be interesting in virtual reality. But of course like as you said the, um fighting against uh, somebody who moves like you or maybe has like your skill is interesting mm -hmm. maybe sli slightly 
like slightly better, although that could be too frustrating. <laughs> I, I play a lot of you, you wanna fly competitive games. You wanna fly to... and throw powers. <laughs> well, not the throwing part, but the, uh, okay. I like slow mo. I like it when 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 you bend time. I like that a lot. So there's this uh, game like Super Hot VR, where yeah. like the game moves as fast as as you move. So it's basically like now it would be stopping, and then if you move quickly, you, uh, I those things I I really find interesting in virtual reality. So when we when we play with speed and and time and 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 motion mm -hmm. and uh, you know it pronounce it more like if you gain like you reach uh, further or something i find those things very interesting but i agree with you it would also be interesting to just like fight like almost like in the real world just with virtual reality could be interesting yeah i feel like right now the games or experiences that are succeeding are the ones that are taking the most advantage of of all of this right that is new yeah, they, so they the, the things that you cannot do in real life, effect. right? I don't know. Have, yeah. you, have you? I've I've played a few shooters in virtual reality, and um, I haven't. Uh, I've done some exercise of like supernatural and 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 Beat yeah. Saber and, and all. But I mean, to be honest, it it didn't. Yeah, it's cool for a little bit, but I I, I didn't I didn't I, I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. Are you doing something on a regular basis? You know, I yesterday or two days ago, I downloaded Bone Lab. It's, it's pretty hot right now, Bone Lab. Everyone is Bone talking Lab. about that game because there is a lot of new physics and there is a lot of new things to do. But mm -hmm. it, I got dizzy and I, it felt like another shooter to me, another VR shooter where you have these guns moving really weird and you need mm -hmm. to reload again. I don't know. Maybe it's not my thing. I I, I like other kind of VR experiences. Um, so for example, I played uh, I like, population one, it's like a multi population one was fun because there, there was yeah. other type of mechanics. I, I like population one, the vertical. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's kind of fun when you play with friends. The only bad thing about it is like, uh, there's a lot of really experienced, they don't have any kind of skill matching in there. And so the people mm, that play 24 yeah. seven, the kids, <laughs> they, they're just pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, the kids, <laughs> the kids. Yeah, I mean, it is yeah. kids because sometimes you can hear their voices. And like, I had this like eight year old in my team. You were only two one day, and then they always join a third guy. And so it was like, it's eight year old joining our team. And it's like, did your daddy also get you the quest for Christmas? And I was like, uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to work. I bought it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to work here. I'm trying to make a living out of work this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the kids I mean, are games, taking over games, VR man. So, um, competitive. Uh, I wonder what do you think is going to happen with the game stuff. I mean, so far the games. I mean, we have we have pretty competitive um, desktop based games like mm -hmm. uh, Valorant right now is a shooter. I play a little bit. I used to play Quake. I was actually in a in a in a, in a German national team in, in Quake uh, in Action Quake at nice. at, uh, at my time. So I still like. And I was going to a lot of LAN parties and stuff like that. I really still like gaming, even though I'm like nearing 40 now. So I'm getting old. And there's no if problem. I were professional, I would have retired already. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. That's uh, true. Are, are you still, do you play games and do you? I, I play some games? games. Yeah. I'm currently playing New World, which is an MMORPG from Amazon Games. Mm -hmm. It's very new. Mm -hmm. I like MMORPGs. I was playing a, an MMORPG here in, in VR. I forgot the name of it, but New World is the one I'm 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 playing right now, and it, it makes you feel, it makes you think about how can maybe in the near future, uh, games could be improved by having like real NPCs, like real people working as NPCs in games. That that could be an improvement, <laughs> you know. Uh, for example, you have very you like, you work, that, that's a job. There is actually that that is actually happening in Horizon. You can go to some areas and you have some meta employees there that are being paid to be an NPC and talk to people and respond that all with the same uh, questions. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I <laughs> but, but it could be it could be taken to to another level, right? Like maybe maybe not a, a meta employee, but maybe you have a game and you have a the guy who sells sells you the weapons or the potions. And it's a real person working there, you know, <laughs> making an actual living. Money from it is interesting. Yeah, I'm it could be making real then... money because <laughs> it mean, could be the company money, okay. paying you to be that guy, yeah. that guy. 
Interesting. So, a uh, question yeah. for you. What do you think... Um, so will these VR games really like take off? Will like will your will your kids uh, in the future? Do you think there will be a lot more VR gaming, or do you think it's there's always going to be desktop based or console based gaming? What do you think? I think that it was like it's like consoles are still running even for like. 30 years old people was doing consoles or 20 people were doing consoles and they mm. are still doing consoles now i think vr give you a really nice advantage even more than now they are untethered so you, you don't have any cables so you could be in a in a cafe and you just put your headset on and you can do a <laughs> lot more you know you can even be playing the console games in a 2d screen while you are in vr so this could on, be an mean, evolution. I'm in not... VR, but I'm playing a console game in VR. Yeah, exactly. So VR could be an evolution, not of consoles, but just as how you can as represent media, just like like TVs. Yeah. Like maybe okay. you're not gonna use TVs anymore. Everyone's gonna have a headset and play whatever. Yeah, there could be an immersive game. I mean, yeah. Do you did you, you know, try a big screen VR and those things? Did you go to a virtual? cinema and did you watch any movies in vr i i have, have done, done it not super fan right now maybe because i didn't have the need but for example if my girlfriend was in a different state it could be a nice way to watch okay. something together yeah, when you have to bridge distance and you still want to be close yeah, yeah i think that's that's true um, it, it feels you know the social things makes a lot of sense in vr like all this social and immersion part of it, like this conversation we're having right now, yeah, this it wouldn't cool feel the because... same. Yeah, it wouldn't yeah, feel I the mean, same if we were in a Zoom call. Zoom, <laughs> Zoom window. I mean, it would be fuck Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can. Yeah. But we gotta, we gotta remove that later, right? <laughs> I mean, it's not like YouTube is not gonna monetize me my videos, so I'm not gonna be. <laughs> Making thousands yeah. of dollars. But then <laughs> one know? day when you're rich and famous and they'll find this video right. with this conversation between That's us true. and they will use it against you. So. That's true. Maybe okay. Zoom was going to give me a sponsorship tomorrow, right? Like, yeah, you, you yeah, can I mean, promote since Zoom. you said such nice things about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so the video video conferencing has... In, in, a, in a professional environment, I think it can it, it can be good. It's not, as, it's not as... I still like the physical meetings more, but this... I mean, this is yeah. this is fun because I get to see some of your expressions. I mean, sometimes it's a little off, but overall, it's it's pretty good. And and I really like like sitting here. I don't know. We've probably been chatting for quite a while already, and it doesn't feel bad. It feels kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, it's it's you, you said it right. It's better than a a video call. I really like real life meetings. That's why I go to the mm. office and I like to grab a marker and draw in the in the white words whatever <laughs> maybe it doesn't even make any sense what i'm drawing but i, I do it anyways <laughs> it, it's a well, nice way to yeah i think you know, you're a very visual a very visual very hands-on yeah. person and so for you um all that is missing in vr and then there are people who would like to take notes and write everything now and i have a lot of students i feel like i know all the different styles <laughs> so there's the note That's taker true. who never who never looks at me <laughs> just writes everything down i say and i'm like hey come on look at me i want to i want to have a conversation with you okay there's the person who who likes to to, to draw a lot or gesture a lot right gesturing mm. is actually like on zoom i don't know i mean sometimes maybe we do it but like here it's actually quite fun again like, uh, when we said like i moved from boston to seattle is it's cool because it kind of like or oh, we did the karate stuff earlier. Um, it's cool. Yeah. It actually it actually captures it. I mean, sometimes my hands look broken, but <laughs> it's still cool. Yeah, in Zoom, it's just your, your face like this. Your yeah, face, just like this. And Big okay. face. I mean, I smile on the camera, <laughs> and you can put on a nice video yeah. filter. Uh, but you're right. I also, think. Um, yeah, I think you're you're comparing it with the current state of the technology, right? But mm. Even even with the current state, it's already better than Zoom calling. But imagine how this is going to feel in, in a couple of years. Probably we're going to have maybe yeah. face expressions, maybe better avatars, oh, yeah, more realistic. Definitely, definitely. But I wonder, it is fun to look at you in this way. I mean, I know what you look like in the real world, but you look, you look cool, man. <laughs> so it is kind of fun. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, maybe. You look cool. I mean, it's, it, if I only meet you this way, then I wonder what you look like in, in real life. I actually have a lot of friends that I only know through computer games. And then 
Yeah. And then one day you meet them in person and and it's always been fun. I mean, one time was a bit disappointing, but, but overall, it's actually <laughs> there was and a now date. It's different because <laughs> there was a date. <laughs> no, no. Uh, was a now, date. Yeah. I mean, now I know what you look like in in real life, and and but if I yeah. only meet you this way, maybe something is also missing. So maybe, but I wonder whether it really has to be like super realistic. Like, do you want to see? Would you like it if my avatar were like really more realistic? It would probably be a little better sometimes for some for some things. Do you feel like it would be better if it was more realistic or not? Not all the time, right? Maybe you want to look cartoonish because maybe you are super like ugly in real life. I think it's, uh, it, is, it is quite fun. But I mean, to be honest, when we can do fully realistic, we can also do cartoony. Uh, so if people like that, then we can probably offer that. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think we both paid attention to some of our features. I didn't get everything right. I didn't have enough time to design my avatar. And then, of course, there's the other issue that you could mimic or look like somebody else, and 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 that then raises some kind of interesting issues from like going back to Second Life and all that. When people, yeah, I sometimes show but, these, you know, these yeah things in in school. Um, yeah, so it, it yeah, for some for what issues. I've seen, people like to create an avatar that looks like them. For like most of the cases and the people that I've met in Horizon and mm -hmm. like most than more than half of the guests that I have here in the show I don't even know yeah. them in real life I have met them through discord or in Horizon Worlds I just thought that they were interesting and I just brought it to the show so I don't know them in real life and to be honest have uh, you met somebody I, I haven't been you have seen the avatar first and then you met them in real life and did you I, I never experience? met them in real life uh, I have okay. never met someone first in VR and then in real life. But the people mm -hmm. that I've met in, in Horizon, I have never had the curio curiosity of thinking, I wonder how they look in real life. Because it's like, for me, they are that avatar. Yeah, an and they look you. like yeah. they are the avatar, yeah. Now, sometimes when so you just hear people's voices, when you're like, when you when you do all like audio chat, like you play a game and you just yeah. do audio chat, I do wonder sometimes what they look like in real life. But like, I mean, I mean that assumption that you're making there is a little dangerous. I mean, it's probably fine for your show because people probably want to look as realistic as possible. But then, um, yeah, I do wonder when you go. Have you done some more social VR things where you meet strangers and and hang out in Horizon World? Mo mostly in Horizon, but chat? maybe maybe because maybe because Horizon is meant for adults and maybe because they want to socialize in a more real way. But if you go to mm -hmm. Uh, VR chat, uh, you, of course, you're going to be meeting Homer Simpson or Sonic the Hedgehog, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or I don't know, a, a hentai girl. So it, people, it probably, it's, it's oh, a wow, guy. That would be it, quite an experience. I mean, imagine yeah. one evening you meet, you meet the three people that you just mentioned. It's quite, a, <laughs> quite an experience. People. Starting with yeah, Homer yeah, Simpson, yeah. I had a beer with Homer and then, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know. I mean, but... Mm, anyway this is cool i like um i like this conversation and and it's um it's it is fun and also like as i said like the set here i wish we could show your we could show your viewers a little bit because you you made it more special today oh maybe this is i i didn't i didn't see this when i watched one or two of your episodes didn't watch too many yet mm -hmm. um oh, it yeah, was mostly this area, show. so i didn't really i didn't really yeah. see all this cool stuff that you put up there and there are actually cameras and i'm not sure whether people see these lights like behind me but they're like lights behind me and yeah you it is like a, a film set and clearly you understand um how to set this up nicely and it's cool it's cool i i like uh, podcasts and tv shows and you know interview programs in youtube so i've been kind of trying to mimic it and as you say here we have other powers that we can have that real life doesn't have like having a camera and well you can have that also in real life having a camera in your hand but i but, do like that you chose yeah. to to put us at the table and and uh, because uh, yeah. i mean i am sitting right now and you're probably sitting too or are you standing i'm not sure i could yeah, be yeah, a standing yeah. desk but I, I decided to sit down for this and actually roughly my table is actually here <laughs> so it nice. does it does align nicely <laughs> um, all right and um yeah and and and, and uh, i like that you because it's a conversation i think uh, i mean it, you could probably put us on a roller coaster <laughs> or you could could have put yeah, us in space <laughs> 
but you, you're saying something I really checked <laughs> you're, you're saying something outside. very interesting that <clears throat> having a table <laughs> yeah <laughs> show, show outside <laughs> I'll show you the hamburger out there. It's actually quite funny. It's quite an interesting yeah. world you have. Oops, shit, my camera. Oh, yeah, now it's it. gone. Uh, right. I don't think we'll yeah, get it back. Sorry. It. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you're saying you're saying nice. Um, you're saying it right. Having a table and having the set actually give you all the immersion to feel like you are in a in a show and in a talk and you're being filmed. Because imagine that. Imagine just imagine that we don't we didn't have this table. It would be mm -hmm. weird. It would be weird. It would be that a would conversation be with two people with no table in the middle. <laughs> you know, it would be like just sitting yeah, in front right. of each other. I mean, other. Uh, the, uh, this is this creates uh, familiarity, and I also yeah, feel yeah. like you're actually. I actually think like you're sitting there. Obviously, you're not sitting there. Uh, the audio quality is really good. Uh, um, it's also spatial. Like oh, now, it would be more on my right side or left side, depending mm -hmm. on what I do. Um, and you're right. I mean, yeah, if it, it, it would feel different. It would feel more like a circle where we're like sharing our problems. <laughs> if you yeah. were like, if there were no tables, but now with the table, it's kind of like cool. an like anonymous alcoholics. You know, they are just chairs, <laughs> no table in the yes, middle. Yes, yes. <laughs> Can I actually grab your papers here? I, I don't think so. I think I didn't put the the programming for that. I the touched logic. something else yeah. in the real world. <laughs> My computer was complaining for a second. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, your your this table is bigger than what I have, but I mean, it is cool. This watch yeah. over here. I mean, it, and it's nice to feel like you're here, even though you're in in Michigan right now, and mm -hmm. we are yeah, we a could couple be even a couple hours. Yeah, we're in even a couple yeah, hours time, apart, and it feels different like three hours. Yeah. Different time zones. Yeah. So that's that's the whole point of the show to be able being able to bring people here and have immersive conversations to talk about tech and to talk about fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, to, to finish, I, I want to show that my viewers, uh, a video you shared with me uh, the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember seeing that video uh, a lot of years ago, but revisiting the video, it was really nice to see it. Uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, let me put the video. Uh, I think it's yeah, sure it might be hyper reality. Okay. Yeah. Speaking. Can you see this? You do that. Yeah, I can see it. Hyper reality. Right. Yeah. Uh, the volume is a little high. So what I think is funny. So th this is this video is about um, some kind of uh, an artist took like how could the world look or something from his idea about how could the world look if we have a lot of clutter of augmented reality information in the future, all these brands showing ads, all these apps in front of you, right. if you had some glasses. And uh, so let me show you a bit more about it. So here they are playing this, this game, but they are sitting on a bus. Si quieres una buena calificación. Voy lo más rápido que puedo. Has pensado en correr. Es saludable y eficiente. Seguro que no hay más trabajos disponibles. Yo estudié para ser profesora y estoy haciendo mercados. Y además puedes quedarte con los There's a fun part here. Um, Tienes que confiar en la aplicación. Te sientes inspirada. Gracias. Chao. So, what, what I think is funny about this, this video well, what I think is funny about this video is that um, it's in Spanish. I don't know if mm -hmm. can you know Spanish. Uh, can you can you tell that something is in Spanish? Yeah, right. I mean, uh, there's not the original version that I know. I think it's some. Oh, really? Uh, so the original artist is is um, British Japanese born. Um, okay. Artist, uh, and so I I thought I always thought it was English, <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, it is definitely. No, no, but, um, but so the the placing that. here, it's a it's actually Colombia, and oh, really? I've been there. Yeah, yeah. So the place that where the video was shot, and when the, it's, when, it's Colombia. When the person goes outside, maybe yeah, I, I maybe you're right actually. Yeah, and I, uh, you know the was, artist, the same artist has done a few different ones, like Merger was okay. like more the future of work, and this one is um. Uh, which is like working in a virtual office is actually quite interesting too. But this one, you're right. I think this is, uh, you're right. You're absolutely right. 
Yeah, and, and what I think is funny about this is that I've been in Colombia and there is a lot of clutter already <laughs> of things happening. In the physical it's, world, yeah. In the physical yeah. world, there's too many things. There's people This person is going running. to search and then get up, right, and, and leave the bus. Uh, I think that yeah. is, uh, it is interesting how this whole world is augmented and then they go to a, a grocery store yeah, or something. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a Colombian class name. Definitely, you're right, yeah. Para donde voy? No. Puedo volver a empezar. What do you think of the interactions? Uh, just futuristic, uh, the kind of super predicting everything. Very I don't know about that gesture. I like this path thing. But I think the dresses from an ergonomic perspective are not very well designed. Adios. Wait, I just realized how it's very convincing. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it is. I just realized how spatial the the how stereo the audio was for for the TV. Are you noticing? This was pretty good. I didn't move much, but I mean, I I can hear it on my right side, and I, I, yeah, it's fun to. Um, to to look at it, to to watch it with you like you have to move your yeah yeah to right me to the right it's kind of fun. <laughs> it literally feels like we're watching something in a conference room <laughs> yes, or something together. in my house yeah <laughs> um so here you can see like there's a lot of things and people happening I don't remember this scene that the person is like looking there for so long i haven't watched in a long time uh so i think it's yeah. cool that we are looking at it again yeah that's yeah, what and... you think it's um there's a chance it's gonna be like that right but hopefully <laughs> we'll have more control <laughs> hopefully we will because i mean it, it's like imagine that we didn't have billboards in the world and mm -hmm. and you show how the world looks how Times square looks to someone in i don't know 1900s maybe they're gonna say wow that's too much light that that's too much things happening <laughs> so it's kind of similar i guess yeah maybe there will be people in the future who think ah, you know they look they watch this and like maybe they live like 200 years after this uh whatever that future is here that project and they think of it it's like oh it's like 1900 from from yeah. <laughs> you know when we see something old now like western style maybe they think oh at that time it was boring i mean from, from our <laughs> perspective right now it's actually quite crazy the way this is portrayed it's obviously designed to be yeah. provocative and um get people to think about that future and there are some really good elements in here like the navigational aids are pretty good um mm -hmm. you could use it in a very like i always have nightmares like at an airport like trying to find like my gate and all that shit and that mm -hmm. th there's uh, this air technology can be very very useful for that and then on an from an accessibility perspective i think as well but the way it's portrayed here is um it's just crazy and i think uh, there I is a, a design tendency yeah, I think there is a technology design tendency right now to make things very usable and not super mm -hmm. cluttery so that you have the right stuff. I think that is uh, mm -hmm. something that we are trying, not not only in the company I work for, but in the company, in, in most of the companies and even the apps that you use, like not give you too much. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, think about what, what, what will happen to your show when, when we go beyond the 100, uh, then 100,000 viewers and then a million viewers and then you get offers and they ask you, can we put some ads here? Maybe put some ads on the table. Um, yeah, and then they want to, because you have a lot of prime <laughs> prime space here that we can actually, well, yeah. we can we can I just want so, the money, man. <laughs> Give me the money. I'll put your see, ad see. right here. So this is the perfect. This is the perfect <laughs> example. So then you do this and you put the ad there, and, and then you have to That's look at fair. what kind of ad it is. And maybe it is it is a bad I'll, ad. I'll interview the ad. I'll change Michael. Put it at the ad there. <laughs> if you give me the money, that's fine. <laughs> but what I mean is, what I mean is, um. Yeah, so these are probably all people. The there are companies behind these ads, and maybe even some yeah. negative, like some attacks here, or some security hacks and whatnot, uh, because some some bad things will happen to the person in the video when as you continue watching it, and and so yeah. But I mean, but you're you look also, at the web. Yeah, the web was initially also, also like 
like yeah. plain, right? And then now we have ads everywhere. We luckily we have ad blockers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you're gonna have some company that is gonna be controlling the system, right? And maybe they are gonna have some guidelines about good and bad practices. Like Apple, but it's their uh, when you so develop something tricky. for Apple, they try to have a very a good quality on on the experiences. So unless it's maybe. like just a browser that you can just open whatever and you have ads and ads and ads. Yeah, web web will be yeah. the wild west, I think. And then if you have. I mean, it will be interesting yeah. that say you go with Apple and I go with another company. We'll be even be able to um, experience the same thing, the same way. Yeah. Um. Or we'll be will will we see these, you know, with all these different cloud services, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, like, uh, when we share things with each other. Actually, if you go back a few years, it was actually pretty like um difficult at the time now i think there are like a, a few predominant ones that people mm -hmm. use to to upload photos and videos and stuff maybe it'll be like like that we will go through a period where there will be a lot of competition yeah. and then there will be a few winners and then ultimately yeah, yeah. the user experience feels better but actually what what happens is it's the same thing that's with, with what's happening with food in the world the, the, all the food that is being manufactured and sold is actually controlled by yep. less than a handful of can companies. you and that is actually can a scary you, thought. Yeah, can you move a little bit back because you are like inside of the table. <laughs> I'm inside the table. Right. Is it disturbing? That, I'm weird. sorry. Yeah, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> so so t talking about ads. Um yes. you know, I think ads are going to keep running. So my kid, sometimes I give him an iPad to for him to mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. And he has some games that so the game is yeah. about mm -hmm. like collecting things that's all the game like collect all the dinosaurs so if you want to collect a dinosaur you need to see an ad that's the whole game just an ad see or... ads so it's super okay. sad to me sometimes i go to see what he's doing and he's just watching ads for minutes so the <laughs> and game... it feels super sad is it like the... but do you have to pay for these ads or what no 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 no. Like... i mean you know the ads will give revenue to the developer so, yeah, so the, the developers developer build these ads into their okay, but that's scary. Yeah, into the you don't ecosystem. Know, as a parent, you don't know what ads your your kid is seeing unless you monitor. Most and most of these, all. yeah, most of these apps, uh, because I built one like that. Uh, they have a lot of restrictions and rules. So when you okay. set up uh, an ad provider, you need to say, "Hey, this is a game for kids." So it's not like you're gonna have like a porn ad. So uh, so it's just gonna be something for things. kids things that maybe yeah are it's, appropriate it's for you know it's things. mostly ads for another game so it's like a okay. pyramid scheme for babies so they can see a lot of ads and ads and ads and then continuously. how often does your kid ask you whether they can play that other game so you have to buy it did that happen <laughs> he just downloads them because most of the time they are okay. free they're but free. they have uh, okay yeah, yeah they're free uh, but it's still, it's for me. It's kind of sad that he's just watching ads and watching ads. He's not even enjoying <laughs> to get the his game. Dinosaurs, yeah, it is sad. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, that yeah. is like really that whoever that developer was. We need to talk. This is not nice. Yeah, you give right. these dinosaurs for free. You don't own these dinosaurs. <laughs> That's right. uh, yeah, yeah, interesting. All right. Um, so uh, yeah, man. I mean, I think that th there is more interactions in this video. Uh, that I, I can share the video later in the comments. But sure. I think we're we're on time. Um, thank you very yeah, much for fun. for coming, Michael. What's that? Thanks for having me. This was fun. I enjoyed it a lot. Hope your viewers yeah, will too. Yeah, it was it was super um, fun. Thanks for thanks for coming. Cool. Uh, thanks everyone for watching this episode of Solar Punk City. See you in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this super super guest I just had here. Uh, he's a rock star in the HCI community, and he's a super researcher, <laughs> and I'm super glad that I can have Don't so important people here in my show. <laughs> All right. Well, see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye-bye.